Uh, so without delay, we'll get started with our first panel. We would like to welcome our first panel of witnesses to the table. First, we have the Honorable Joe Courtney. He's a member of Congress from the Second District of Connecticut. Uh, good having you here, Joe. And uh, we have uh, the Honorable Peter Welch, who's a member of Congress from Vermont at large. Mr. Courtney, we'll begin with you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Scott, and uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Nagelbauer, for uh, uh, holding this hearing. Uh, obviously, it's another example of your commitment and leadership in terms of dealing with the challenges that face dairy um, in, in uh, the U.S., and, uh, and, and that commitment actually extended back uh, last year when the Farm Bill was put together. Uh, this committee led the way with Mr. Peterson's assistance to extend the milk subsidy program, which obviously was a a high priority for dairy farmers all across the country, and for the first time uh, included input costs in terms of calculating the formula, which uh, again is uh, coming from a, a high cost uh, part of the country in the Northeast, uh, was an important uh, modification to the program. Congresswoman Rosa DeLauro obviously was uh, working hard from the appropriation side to, to make sure that that formula uh, was better um, uh, in, in tune with uh, the challenges that again face uh, different regions in the country. Um, and I would, I would actually you know, note that when this farm bill was passed, uh, we were at a point in the uh, U.S. economy where farms, uh, where dairy was bringing in about $18 per hundredweight. Uh, obviously, the world has changed dramatically since enactment of the farm bill. The uh, prices have collapsed, as was uh, indicated in your opening statements. Exports have collapsed. Uh, again, at the time the Farm Bill was passed, 10% of America's uh, dairy products were being exported abroad. Uh, that has fallen in half. Only 5% of uh, U.S. dairy is now being exported. And the combination uh, of uh, the, the world economy uh, falling, uh, the national economy being in recession, uh, has been a perfect storm. Uh, for dairy farmers all across uh, the country. Uh, Peter and I come from the Northeast, but uh, we have had many conversations with members from California uh, uh, to Maine uh, who have dairy in their district, and uh, this is a national problem and it's a national crisis. Uh, the, as the chairman indicated, there's definitely lots of ideas out there and, and lots of solutions. What I, what I would just say is that clearly some of these are long-term structural changes about whether we need to have some form of a price support uh, system for, for dairy. Um, that obviously is a, an interesting and important issue that we uh, need to debate as a country. But the fact of the matter is we're at a point today, July 14th, where dairy farmers are out there borrowing money to paying operating costs uh, for, for their farmers. Farms, and that is a death spiral uh, for a lot of farms, particularly small farms. Uh, we've lost 10% of our farms in the state of Connecticut. Again, not a state you usually associate with dairy, but the fact is eastern Connecticut um, is, is a, a part of the, our state which uh, retains its uh, uh, rural and, and dairy uh, heritage, uh, but it is at grave risk today because, as I said, the, these, these folks are in a death spiral. And offering more loans uh, or low interest loans really is not a solution uh, for for uh, these folks who are facing uh, th this type of death spiral. Again, they're selling uh, milk today at a hundred weight of twelve dollars compared to eighteen dollars when, when the farm bill was passed, and, and the milk subsidy program is just incapable uh, of dealing with that that large uh, spread in terms of their costs and the, and the price that they're that they're taking in. Uh, again, we we have um, been trying, uh, Peter and I, uh, over the last few months through the stimulus bill, through the 2009 agriculture uh, appropriations bill, and through the 2010 uh, agriculture Appro appropriations bill to see if there's an avenue to get temporary relief, whether it's increasing the, the amount of support on a temporary basis for, in the milk subsidy program, whether the Department of Agriculture would consider raising some of the, the, the basic support prices. But the fact is, is that we, we need to have uh, a short-term uh, answer to, to what people are facing um, today as they get up. I, and um, Peter can, I think, describe the, the grave problem that exists uh, in the state of Vermont where um, uh, the Department of Agriculture actually has a suicide hotline for dairy farmers who are facing, uh, again, these uh, almost unbearable stresses and challenges. I would conclude by saying that uh, this morning's news uh, there is uh, press reports that Goldman Sachs is reporting uh, close to $4 billion quarterly profit. Uh, people are very excited and happy about that, and, and certainly we like to see success. But I think it's important for this Congress to recognize that that would not have happened if there had not been massive government intervention uh, from the last quarter 
quarter of 2008 through the first quarter. They received TARP funds, they received derivative payments from AIG, who also received uh, uh, TARP funds, and they received massive help from the FDIC. Um, it is a hard uh, argument uh, or is a hard um, situation for us to go back to, to districts where dairy farmers have been rebuffed at every attempt to try and get that same sort of short-term relief and for them to see um, this type of um, uh, entity that received massive government uh, help now um, taking a victory lap um, and, and, and the dairy industry of this country is really um, shut out in terms of being able to get that same type of response and action from Washington, D.C. And I hope, again, with your leadership and this committee's long record of, of support and commitment to dairy farmers that we are going to see that type of action and that type of help for a critical part of the American economy. Thank you, Mr.